Thumbelina, Thumbelina, this is the story of Thumbelina. There once was an old woman who longed to have a child, but no child came to her. She went to a fairy and asked her what she could do. The fairy said, That's easy. Take this tiny tulip bulb, plant it in a flower pot, water it carefully, and then wait. The old woman planted the bulb, and soon there grew a strange flower. She touched it gently. Immediately, the petals opened, and in the center of the blossom stood a graceful little girl, no bigger than your thumb. Oh, how wonderful! Here's a lovely little lady who has come to live with me. She can sleep in a polished walnut shell, dine from the honey that the flowers sell, sing with a voice like a silvery bird. She's come to live with me. Thumbelina, Thumbelina. Yes, that's me. Thumbelina, Thumbelina. Full of glee. A cup of tea will be my lake. A boat of petals we can be. Thumbelina, Thumbelina. Oh, how glad I am. Thumbelina and the old woman lived happily together for many a day. But one terrible night, an ugly toad hopped upon her windowsill and saw Thumbelina sleeping in the tiny walnut shell. What a pretty girl. I must have her for my bride. And with that, he leaped into the room and stole off with Thumbelina, still asleep under her rose-leaf quilt. Thumbelina awoke in the morning, terrified, to find herself adrift on a lily pad in an enormous pond. The ugly toad was watching her. I want to marry you, my little one. I'm going down now to prepare my house under the stream for you. I'll be back in a hop and a jump. The toad sprang into the water, and left Thumbelina alone. You can just imagine how upset she was. What shall I do? What shall I do? Never have I been so blue. I cannot fly. I cannot swim. I'd rather die than go with him. Oh, clouds, oh, trees, oh, birds, oh, bees. Won't somebody hear my Come out here and rescue me An awful toad has stolen me And says that I must be his wife He'll put me in a muddy hole And I will have to stay there all my life Oh, hear my plea and pity me Oh, hear my plea and set me free And somebody did hear. The little fish peeped their heads out of the water. And when they saw her, set quickly to work nibbling the roots that held the lily pad. And then a great butterfly spied her. He clasped the trailing end of the lily pad and fluttered off down the stream, carrying Thumbelina behind him. Beside her swam her friends, the fish, singing. Thumbelina, Thumbelina, yes, that's me. Thumbelina, Thumbelina, full of glee. I've a butterfly to guide me, fish to swim beside me. Thumbelina, Thumbelina, oh, how glad I am. Joyously, they sailed far away from the ugly toad. But suddenly, a huge black beetle swooped down on the boat and carried Thumbelina off to the bush where his family lived. When the other beetles saw her, they shouted with laughter. <laughs> How horrible she is. Oh, 
only two legs and no feelers. Why, she looks just like a human being. How ugly. After all that, the beetle who had caught her thought she must be ugly and wanted nothing more to do with her. He picked her off the bush and dumped her under a daisy. All summer long, Thumbelina lived happily among the flowers of the field. But when winter came, the flowers shriveled and the birds who had sung their songs to her flew away. Poor Thumbelina was left alone. She could not stay where she was, so she wrapped herself in a dry leaf and started to struggle through the sharp grass. Oh, how she shivered. How cold the wind blows. I fear it will snow, and I've no place to go. No home, no bed to lay my head, no food to eat. No shoes for my feet. I've walked till I'm weary. I'm sad and I'm dreary. I need some place snug, a kiss and a hug, or else I shall die. Yes, I shall die here under the sky. At last, she came to the home of a field mouse. She knocked on the door. Please, may I have a grain of wheat? I haven't eaten a bite in two days. The field mouse felt sorry for her. Poor child, come into my warm room and dine with me. In fact, you may stay the whole winter and keep me company. Oh, Thumbelina was delighted. And the days went quietly by in Mouse's house. And one morning, she said to Thumbelina, a neighbor of ours is going to pay us a visit. He wears a black velvet coat and is very rich. You must sing him your prettiest songs. Then perhaps he will want to marry you. Sure enough, Mouse's neighbor, a mole, fell in love with Thumbelina right away. Gee, Thumbelina, you're the prettiest thing I ever saw. Marry me, Thumbelina. You like being Mrs. Mole. You've no place to go, and you can't stay here forever. What shall I do? What shall I do? Never have I been so blue. My hopes are dim, my chance is slim. What can I do but marry him? Yeah, we'll get married in the spring, Cumbelina. So uh, say goodbye to the sky and the sun. Come now on this Mrs. Mole. Your home will be a hole. And deep within the earth, you find it made of dirt. On dandelions we'll munch. You may cook them for my lunch. We will live without a light. It's always night. So say goodbye to the sky, Thumbelina, for I hate it, and you won't see it again. Kiss the flowers one more time. Take my paw and you be mine. No more sunshine, no more birds, and no more rain. Now uh, follow me through the tunnel I've built to my house, Thumbelina. But don't be frightened by the dead bird who has fallen through the ceiling. Phew, I hate birds. And off they went. When they came to the dead swallow, the mole pushed it to one side. But Thumbelina knelt while the mole waddled on and stroked the soft feathers. How lovely you are, little swallow. Were you the bird who sang to me last summer? And during the night, she crept out of bed and wove a soft blanket of hay. She carried it to the swallow and tucked him in so that he might lie warmly in the cold earth. Sleep. 
The next night, Thumbelina went again to look at the bird. And what do you think? The swallow's eyes were open. He wasn't dead at all. He had been frozen by the cold wind, and Thumbelina's blanket had warmed him back to life. But he was much too weak to move. Secretly, the tiny girl nursed him through the winter. When spring came, the swallow was strong enough to fly. Soon, Thumbelina would marry the mole and never see the light again. How sad they both were to say goodbye. Suddenly, the swallow flapped his wings and sang out, Thumbelina, Thumbelina, you must come with me. You can't stay here. I can't leave you here. Yes, yes, I'll come, swallow. It's a pity to leave my kind mouse, but I'll die if I have to marry the mole. Climb on my back, Thumbelina. Snuggle under my feathers. Hold on tight, and off we go. For there's a land far from the snow where They flew over forest and sea and over the highest mountains until at last they came to an old palace at the top of which were many swallows' nests. This is my home, Thumbelina, but you cannot live in a nest. You must choose one of those bright white flowers below and I will put you down on it. How surprised Thumbelina was when she landed on the green leaves of the flower to see a man no bigger than herself and shining like a drop of rain. He was the angel of the flower and king of all the little men and women who dwell in flowers. Thumbelina dazzled him and he asked her to be his queen. Oh yes, I will be your queen. And with that, each flower opened and out came a crowd of tiny men and women smiling and singing. Thumbelina, Thumbelina, how do you do? Thumbelina, Thumbelina, we love you. You're so pretty and so clever, live with us forever. Thumbelina, Thumbelina, oh how glad we are. You're you. So there she stayed as queen of the flowers, dancing about throughout the hours, eating the honey, sipping the dew, no bigger than a butterfly, but wonderful like you. Thumbelina, Thumbelina, oh how glad I am, oh how glad are we.
mama duck was round and soft, and she sat in a warm brown nest. Under her wings were four eggs, three small ones, and the fourth remarkably large. Suddenly, to her delight, the smaller eggs burst. One, two, three and three charming baby ducks popped their heads out. They looked around them with amazement and said to their mama, How wide the world seems, how high is the sky, the trees are so green. Green's good for the eye, you find much for wonder, and joys without number. Nothing to fear, my dears, how nice you're all here. That is all but one. If only this last egg would burst, we could all go in the water. But it's so large. The mama duck sat and sat, but the egg didn't burst. After a few days, an old duck came to pay her a visit. Well, you sure have been on that egg a long time, Mrs. Duck. Must be a turkey. <laughs> Might as well quit and start teaching your ducklings how to swim. I think I'll sit on it just a little longer. And with that, there came a peculiar quack. <coughs> and the great egg burst. <coughs> Out came the biggest, ugliest duckling anyone had ever seen. Oh, how all the ducks laughed at him. <laughs> <laughs> He is a turkey chick, but he'll go in the water even if I have to push him in myself. Really, though, he swam as well as any of them and sang as well, too. It's lovely to swim, to skim over ripple, to dive for a nibble of bread. It's lovely to slide, to glide on the water, or let it close over your head. Look at him go. No, it's certainly not a turkey. He's my own child, even though he's not much to look at. Come, come. I'll present you all in the barnyard now. Follow me, but take care no one steps on you. The little ducks made themselves right at home in the barnyard. All except the last ugly duck. He was beaten and pushed. The turkey gobbled at him. And the chickens pecked and flapped their wings at him. The other ducks were just as bad. They quacked and turned their backs on him. It got worse every day. The poor duckling was mocked by everyone. They jeered, they sneered, they said, you're weird. At last one day he flew away. He flew over the barnyard fence. A long, long flight to a moor that was dim. In the morning, two wild ducks flew up. They looked at the duckling. You're remarkably ugly. You sure are. But it's nothing to us, as long as you don't try to marry into our family. The wild ducks fell dead. A hunt had begun. <laughs> the hunting dogs came rushing into the swamp. Suddenly, a huge, frightful dog stopped right by the duckling, his tongue hanging out of his mouth. He showed his teeth. And then 
He raced on without even touching the duckling. Thank goodness. I'm a terribly ugly duck, and occasionally that's my luck. Not even a dog in this dreadful bog wants to take a bite, cause I'm such a sight. So it's plain to see no one wants me an ugly duck. Hours later, all was quiet, and the duckling hurried off the moor as fast as he could. He went a long way without meeting anyone, but at last he came to an old hut, so dilapidated it didn't know itself which way it should fall. Cold and frightened, the duckling slipped through a crack into the room. Here there lived a cranky woman with her cat and her hen. They were very proud, but the woman, thinking that the duckling might lay eggs for her just the way the hen did, said he could stay for a while. <laughs> Then the cat and the hen introduced themselves. Here's Mr. Cat, who's quite a wit. And Mistress Hen, on eggs she sits. We're both so clever and so much better than you. It's true, but if you try to be like us. And do not cry, and do not fuss. We'll let you stay here. What luck for a duck to be near us. Marvelous. Indeed, these two thought they were half the world, and much the better half. But when the duckling hinted that this might not be so, they cried, Can you lay eggs? Uh, no. Can you arch your back or purr? No. Then, then will, will you, you hold, hold your, your tongue, tongue when clever, clever folks are speaking? Then the duckling sat in a corner. And when he felt the warm sunshine stream in the window, he began to dream aloud. It's lovely to swim, to skim over ripple, to dive for a nibble of bread. Should you dive? Who wants to swim? You certainly have stupid whims. Just stretch your legs or lay some eggs like me. Like me. Like us. Marvelous. I think I will go out into the wide world. Yes, do go. And so he went away. He swam on the water and dived, but no one said a word to him because he was so ugly. Then one night he heard a peculiar cry and saw above him a flock of great white birds, swans. They mounted so high, so high, the duckling felt a strange longing for them. Such birds, such birds. seen such beautiful birds they did they saw I never have seen such beautiful birds before but of course they never noticed him and now came the winter. It was bitterly cold. The duckling had to swim about constantly to keep part of the water free of ice. But every night the space he swam in became smaller and smaller. And last he was exhausted and lay still and froze fast in the ice. In the morning, a peasant came by. He cracked the ice crust to pieces and carried the duckling home. In the warm room, the duckling came too. But when the peasant's children tried to play with him, the duckling was afraid he would be hurt again and flew wildly around the room. The children tried to catch him. He spilled the milk, spilled all the milk, upset the bread, upset the bread, laying down the pillows on the bed, on the bed, the buttercup, the buttercup, crashed to the floor, bang to the floor, Freddy, he fluttered. Out the door, out the 
door. Somehow he got through the winter, and when spring came, the duckling tried his wings. They seemed to beat the air more strongly than before. In no time at all, he found himself in a great garden abloom with flowers. Swimming towards him on the sparkling lake were three of the glorious swans the duckling had loved when they flew high above him. I will fly to them, even though they beat me because I am so ugly. I'd rather be beaten by them than chased by children and scorned by dogs and go hungry all the winter. On to the water he flew and bent his head toward the birds. And then, what did he see reflected in the water? Not a duck, gray and ugly, but a swan. At that moment, a girl and boy ran into the garden. There's a new swan. It's the most beautiful of all. So young, so handsome. They danced about on the shore while the other swans stroked him with their beaks. And the duckling that was no more shyly hid his head under his wings. A swan, a swan, a swan am I who ever would have dreamed it. A prince among creatures beneath the sky. I'm almost ashamed for so happy am I. A beautiful, wonderful, delicate thing, no longer the ugly duckling. The water shone clear and gay. The sun was warm and bright. He slowly raised his slender neck and spread his wings, so great, so white. And as he sailed into the day, the children marveled at the sight. A beautiful one. 